All right. Well, here we are. Finally got my camshaft in yesterday. Didn't come in till 5:30 at night, so I uh, didn't get anything done last night. Rainy day outside today, so I may as well sit in here and finish putting that sucker together. Been a long time. Jesus, two weeks waiting for camshaft. Anyways, there's all the parts. Ready to go into the motor. I can finally get this thing done. Like that swivel action camera. Woo! Alright, so we're going to get this thing put together. First step is remembering where the hell I let off because it's been so long. Had a few uh, moments to look at stuff last night, but I didn't get anything actually done. So I'm going to open everything up here and and uh, make sure it's all the right stuff for starters. And uh, start putting this stuff together. I am going to pre-lube the engine before I ever start it. So this is not as big a deal. If you're not going to pre-lube, then I would highly recommend getting actual assembly lube. Just because it's thicker and it'll stay on the bearing surfaces while you're cranking that engine up for the first time and circulating the oil through there. But like I say, I'm uh, I'm pre lubing and I've done plenty of these with just oil. The only thing here is just be careful when you're pushing the cam in, you're not knocking the bearings out. All right, the cam bearings can be knocked back out if you're a bull in a china shop. And these six inline sixes are a really long cam, so V8s and smaller V6s and that have short cams, they're real easy to get in. These ones, there's a lot of leverage that you got to contend with. Good thing is you can get your hands right down into these suckers. So you see I'm out just about the point where all the cam bearings are starting to go in and that's when I like to hit them with a little bit more oil. Okay, camshaft is in. Uh, on these here, the end of the cam sticks out about a quarter of an inch. Uh, if you've done small block Chevys or anything like that, you know, it usually sits almost flush or, or flush. So it was a little weird when you first look at it, it sticks out, that's fine. Your bearing journals and, uh, are all lined up. And if you look at your cam gear, it actually overlaps the end of the cam. So it's all good. So we're going to put the oil pan on. There's a couple things you want to check before you go put your oil pan on. One is make sure your surface is spotless. All right. Nothing worse than putting an engine together and having a seeping oil pan. What I what I like to use is a, a drill. This is actually a, a plastic wire wheel, kind of like a pot scrubber, except a little harder. It's for stripping paint. You get them at any hardware store. It's not steel, so you don't have to worry too much about damaging the metal, and you can get a pretty good finish. Next thing is check your holes, especially on these older pans. A lot of times somebody will have a leaky pan and what they'll do is they'll just tighten up the bolts. And sometimes what will happen is you'll get little dimples here. Okay, so you want to make sure these holes are all flat. If they're not, just take a ball peen hammer and set the round part here and give it a crack and it'll push that back down without distorting the pan. Alright? It's not... The last thing and one of the more overlooked things is the oil pump. Alright? I put a new one on. And the strainer. The strainer has to be the right height off the bottom of the pan. All right, you don't want it sitting right down in the soup where it can pull in all that bearing sludge that you saw when I cleaned it. So it's usually about a quarter of an inch gap. So you measure from your block height to there. You can use a straight edge if you want or however you desire. But you have to adjust that strainer so it's a quarter of an inch off the bottom of the pan. All right, and again, you just measure the pan to the edge of the gasket surface, measure your sump pickup, and adjust it. This one, when I first put it together, I just mocked it up like that. It was actually lifting it a bit, and I could tell because I had to push down on the corners to get this thing to sit right. All right, 
So I make sure your sump is the right height. And of course, blow everything out. Go at it with the air, make sure no little pieces of rag or something. This has been sitting for two weeks, so God knows I've kept the pan on it, but God knows what's gotten in there. A mouse would be interesting. Okay, so you're going to have three things for the oil pump gasket on this one. You're going to have a rubber seal, which sits on the back journal here. And then you're going to have two gaskets. You can tell which one's which, because one has the cutout for the oil pump on one side. You can't really put them in backwards. You'll see the bolts don't line up, and the shape just doesn't match. Okay, so just mock them up. Make sure you got the right ones. RTV silicone. Okay, so for the silicone, all I'm doing is I'm putting a dab in the corner around the main journals. And I'm just pushing it down a bit with my finger. I don't like to go all the way around it in the main uh, cap here with silicone because it just turns into a nightmare when i got to clean it years from now. And then I'll put a little bit on my finger and just go along the surface. It just needs a light film, something to help it stick. Doesn't need to be gobbed in there with a caulking gun. Careful you don't put it down the bolt holes or into the engine. You don't have to worry about the front of the engine on this because the timing cover handles that. All right, oil pan, got a light film silicone. I put a bead on the corners around the rubber seal where it meets the gasket. We are ready to go. Certainly makes life easy when you label all your bolts. Of course, you want to start these by hand. They don't take a lot of torque. So, if you are going to use an air tool or a driver of some kind, just be very careful you don't go too crazy. Okay, the oil pump or oil pan's only on loose right now. We're going to time this uh, engine. Number one cylinder here, you want to get at the top dead center. Okay. I just use a pipe wrench to turn the, the crank. It's not hard. I'm not damaging anything. And you can feel where it's supposed to be. All right. The, camp, the, the crank gear on this just slides on. It's not a press fit like uh, a lot of other engines. You can't really screw the timing up on this because it's got a keyway. Just make sure your dimple is out, not in. Obviously, this would be bad. All right, it's got a keyway. You can't screw this part up. The end of the crank is a different size. You get to the wider part and just give it a little wiggle. No tools required. And that'll walk right off. All right. So we're basically top dead center here. We may have to wiggle it just a bit. You want to make sure that bolt is or that uh, plug off is in there. That's an oil gallery. If that's not in, the oil will just spew out of there. Okay. So you can go ahead and put your chain on your cam gear. Now the cam gear on these has a one stud, and that's it. There's a big bolt that goes in the end. Same thing. Timing mark right there. The idea is they should be pointing at each other. So in the end, what you're looking at is that, essentially. But you got to line up this. So you put that on, and you can turn your cam and rough time it. Timing marks right there, like so. So that's essentially what you're looking at for timing. Now you can use a straight edge and go across. All right. All right, so there's your marks. Everything's timed up. Okay, so now all we got to do is take the cam gear off. You can see right there how it's supposed to be. And put it back together. And you may just have to do a little tappy taps. Check the straight edge again. And we're golden. We're timed. That's how easy it is. All right. On the crankshaft side, you got a little oil slinger. And it's got a keyway. Okay. You notice it's shaped like a dish.
just like so all right so the purpose of that is to just to keep the oil from going out towards the seal on the timing cover and allow it to just drop back into the pan okay the timing chain tends to pick up a lot of oil and that just to redirect some of it there's two bolts here the same thread pattern same size diameters all right two different washers one short fat washer and one bigger one one's for the cam one's for the crank all right and this one here will go into the crank later to hold all the pulleys and balancers on all right make sure you put your right bolts in Okay, timing covers next. Cleaned it up quite a bit, but a lot of discoloration. Some of the later model ones have a, uh, a little pin that you put in here. It's like a spring-loaded little juby that interacts with this part of the timing cover. And that's a thrust to keep the cam from walking in and out. Because if you notice, there's nothing really to keep that cam from moving. On these older ones, there's just a little dimple here. You can actually see where the, the bolt is occasionally coming in contact. All right. So just make sure that's not all worn out. Lubricate up your oil timing cover oil seal. Okay. That'll seal around the, the crank here once you put your balancer in. Obviously, you're going to need the gasket. That just goes in like so. The timing cover, you're going to... Put some silicone on it, particularly here on the bottom. The uh, seal on this one's rubber. It's got these little tabs. They go into the small holes, all right, and they go right through. Sometimes those little holes will get plugged up, so you may have to use a little pick. Okay, so you can actually see there where it goes right through. Okay, that just keeps everything in place because there's only four bolts that hold this whole mess on. All right. There we are, we got our RTV silicone heavy into the uh, seam areas between the oil pan, the block, and where the time cover goes. That is probably the worst spot for leakings right in there on both sides. All right, you got a lot of different gaskets and seals all connecting in the same spot. So be very generous with your silicone in there. You don't want to tighten any of the bolts until you get them all started. putting these ones in tight because I actually have to put the brackets on and whatnot so for now they're just gonna sit there Okay, timing chain is in, timing cover's all done, torqued down, except for the big bolts, which uh, end up being the alternator bracket anyway. Oil pan is torqued. I'm going to flip it over and install some lifters. <laughs> 